Welcome to the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Best fans in the league right here, baby! With your hosts, Colin and Mike. <laughs> Susie Q, Susie Q. Produced by Mark and Johnny Z. Bleed Red Black starts now. Podcast for all things red black. This complete on the near side, Sinopoli makes a tackle into the end zone, touchdown! It's Brad Sinopoli! Every season, active pass throws, it's intercepted, and this is going to be a pick six into the end zone for a touchdown, it's Jarrell Gavin! Touchdown, Ottawa! All season. First and 10, Ottawa for the BC 30. Here's Burris throwing into the end zone, Ellingson, and it is caught! Oh, what a catch by Greg Ellingson! Hello and welcome to episode 28 of the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. I'm Colin. I'm joined here once again by my main man, season ticket holder Mike. What's up? It's good to be back. I want to thank Janine for filling in last week. That was a great show. Thanks, man. Uh, I got to make sure I'm down here more often. Nothing like getting a few pot shots in at me when I'm not here. So <laughs> definitely let this. I let. I listen. I definitely listen when I'm not in studio. Uh, but great show, guys. Always uh, that just solidifies what an amazing podcast team we have. Um, the show can go on without me. I just want to keep your, just one show at a time. I want to keep your listener base engaged with season ticket holder Mike stuff, you know. So even when you're not here, yeah, I got to give the people what they want, and that is uh, apparently us making fun of you. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I, it works. It works, and everyone recognizes that baritone chuckle, the one and only. <laughs> Producer Mark, how's, how's she going? It going? Oh, it's going well. So this is the Grey Cap expe- uh, special. Yeah, Grey Cap. The yeah. Grey Cap was yesterday. It was. Everyone got Grey Caps uh, at the end of the game, so good for them. It's a little bit of a, a thought-provoking moment there. We decided to call it the Grey Cap yesterday. That was the entertainment value <laughs> at the Grey, at the Grey <laughs> Cup party. It it's was, amazing, like at least 15 minutes where the jokes spawned from there. Absolutely. Um, but I'm sure they were all terrible and... You know so what's wrong with a gray cap? <laughs> it's not a it's not a cup anymore. It's just a cap that's waited passed a, down. Waited all year, generations. Get, hey, that, that was the one joke that uh, our buddy said was uh, they're not new caps. Like no, uh, that's a, that's a hundred and thirty year we've had those caps on. Man, they're dirty. You they're dirty me? old caps. <laughs> so um, so I mean, obviously, uh, we'll talk about this later. But uh, gray cup was yesterday. I'm sure everyone who's listening to this knows what happened. Um, it was a great game. It was amazing to see our city, our team, um, represented in such a positive manner. Um, it made us all proud, and uh, it was one hell of a game. And we'll talk about that in the game recap. But uh, but man, was it was it close? Um, the verbiage for across the nation that that was regurgitated more and more and more throughout the week leading up to the Grey Cup was uh, the second season team and. You know, the league puts together a format in which allows teams to draft players uh, in in a in a franchise. Uh, sorry, in a um, inaugural season. Yeah, um, and it's there for a reason. And we saw the, you know, the architect of our team um, put together through that draft last year and through free agency and through, um, just due diligence, uh, put a team together. And I didn't feel like it was, I was, the verbiage was getting a bit much this whole second season, second season. And then it was, there, it was uh, balanced a bit by them saying that, uh, Edmonton was four and 14 a few seasons ago. So they're also rebuilding, but I mean, they at least had their core, you know, to kind of go off of, but, uh, either way it was, it was a pretty amazing game. And, uh, that's the nature of the CFL too. It's a t- it's a league that allows teams to. There will be a parity, but parities last two to three seasons, and and teams will. Montreal, uh, as an example, um, are going through a transition without uh, uh, a co- an all star quarterback, uh, and and uh, and Winnipeg this year definitely is going through a transition. So we could be talking about Edmonton next year, you know, or sorry, we could be talking about Winnipeg next year on a ten win run, and sure, you know what I mean. Um, so unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to go to Winnipeg um, for due to prior commitments. Um, but we were represented by um, the one and only Janine, uh, who's an integral part of our team. Um, it's also her birthday today. 
So I want to wish her happy birthday. Um, so whether she's here or not, like we're still going to celebrate her birthday. So um, <laughs> and there's some sim- symbolic <laughs> symbology. We're all, yeah. we're all currently wearing uh, Ninja Turtles masks. Um, I don't really like party hats. Yeah. I thought Ninja Turtle mask might be fun. But it's symbolic <laughs> and, of, of who she is for us. Yeah, because she is like, I would like to say she is like our April O'Neil meets Casey Jones, right? With a little bit of Splinter mixed in. So yeah. we're the Ninja Turtles and she's kind of, you know, everything else. So. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just in the basement eating pizza, man. And she's out there coming up with the facts. So who's Bebop and Rocksteady? That's what I want to know. Or Crank. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, so happy uh, you, you've never looked better at 29, sweetheart. You look amazing. Yeah, and um, thanks for being such an amazing representative of not only the podcast, but uh, our city and our team this weekend. You were um, The media was all over you um, with good reason. Yeah, she was um, like Kanye West out there. It was just like nonstop. It's <laughs> crazy. At one point, the paparazzi the, following her around. At one point, halfway through, she just threw the mic down on the stage and, and smashed it and walked off because she said it didn't sound good enough. So I love it. Har- harnessing her inner Kanye. That's- yeah, but no, a lot of like paparazzi on her too, for sure. So articles in The Citizen. She was a uh, TSN 1200 co hosting with, with the, AJ with and AJ uh, Jackie back and, and just. All around uh, visible, too, with CBC Radio here in Ottawa before she left CBC Manitoba. So get on. And I can't think, I mean, we all carry ourselves quite well, but like she made it very clear to us last week, she may be more charming than we are. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll give her that. <laughs> and that's when Mark went on a tangent about being sensitive. And she's like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> you don't listen either. <laughs> it was yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks, Janine. You're awesome. Uh, we had a birthday um, muffin for you. Yeah. Um, Pictures on Twitter. Check us out at Bleed Red Black. So, even though you can't be here um, for your Ninja Turtles birthday party, um, it's, we're having a lot of fun without you. So, um, so we bleed black. Re- <laughs> Were there more than sparklers uh, lit down here, man? Um, I'm Michelangelo. <laughs> who who wanted ice cream on this pizza? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, man. Uh, no, true story though. Um, and that's the way we do it with uh, bleed red blacks. We just if there's an excuse to have a party, we'll party. And these Ninja there's- Turtle masks are surprisingly warm. You know. Right? Like I think you should keep one in your in your first aid kit if you ever get stuck in a snowstorm. It'd be you great can, for skating on the can... canal in the winter. You know, <laughs> cut that wind right down. They are pretty awesome, and I got I got ten of them for three dollars. Like this is amazing. I would also say that's that it brings value. I would also say that it brings up our creep factor by at least <laughs> plus ten. <laughs> Okay, well, the thing is, is it worse when I wear my glasses under it or over it? What do you like? Let me see. I'll do the over now. Riveting, riveting radio, folks. (laughs) Riveting radio. (laughs) You look like an intelligent turtle now. (laughs) This is episode 28, and you'd think we'd figure out by now that something people can't People can't see us. People can't see us. Picks, uh, we got We got them. We'll supply them. They're they're real. They're legit. We might have to Photoshop them, but uh, whatever. You want to give a shout out here to the one and only. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Uh, shout out to AJ. Thanks for your support uh, last week. He not only supported um, our show, he also gave props to our Mastodon uh, music uh, selection. So, uh, And he's also the voice behind the infamous Second of Bronson radio call. So uh, good on him. And, uh, so you're getting a percentage of that ringtone, you think? Or how does that work? Yeah, so that's what I was wondering. I'm like, how long until that uh, ringtone's available uh, through most of our providers? Uh, Mark, I don't know what you got going on, but maybe you want to talk to AJ and maybe TM that bad boy. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Touchdown. <laughs> That'd be awesome in your office. <laughs> Maybe some remix action with some like I like to move it, move it or something. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to limit your creative uh, process. Um, just know that it's all yours, buddy. So. Motorhead and Mastodon, eh? They get the they get the, so the we, nod. Yeah, so we did our our winning um, music update poll last week, and uh, I was surprised. I mean, Mark put some lame stuff up there, but you know, as I suspected, he threw a little a little Drizzy and some other hip hop song. I don't know what it was. I googled some, winning some songs. Other, some other rapper. <laughs> uh, Dusty Dre. What is a Motorhead? Yeah. What is a Motorhead? <laughs> Love you, Andrea. The best. Um, uh, speaking of her, she put up a great post today. Just that it was a great feel good post yeah. on uh, Twitter talking about what it means to be an Our Nation fan and uh, what she's gone through. So, yeah, I couldn't agree with her more. So. Like I was, I was that guy. 
you yeah. know, a little bit upset with the team last year and feeling good and hoping exactly what she was looking for, that players would use it mm -hmm. last year as a stepping stone this year. So good for her. Um, so, yeah, my faith in, in humans has been restored now that the new winning song selected <laughs> yes. by the fans is, drum roll, uh, no? Um, are we going to announce it this year or are we going to wait till next season? Well, I mean... I talked to Mike on the way over here. Like this season is defined, like winning defined. It pretty this much season. was a winning season. Um, we we exceeded everyone's expectations, uh, including our own. And uh, I can't. This is all about winning. I just want. I, obviously, we we didn't get to where we wanted to be, but uh, yeah, how can we argue the success no, we, of this season? I don't season? think we can. So it, it, in that in that light, I think we can announce that uh, the winner was. Live to win by Motorhead. So that means we now have to, we, we have to book our trip down to LA to go meet Lem and get the room going. Get play some, get, <laughs> and play some Drink slots. some whiskey and play some BLTs. <laughs> sounds some sounds Reds. like the last time I went to Chelsea. <laughs> I should think I saw you there. Were you working? <laughs> um, anyways, so can't wait to hear a uh, little uh, Motorhead every week. And for those of you who aren't familiar, you, you will be very familiar with what is a motorhead shortly. Um, I also wanted to say that there was a lot of really interesting features and stories and stuff done on the Great Cup weekend. Um, the one that really got me, and obviously because we have kind of a personal connection, is uh, the feature that CBC said that CBC, CB said. <laughs> That'll make it more interesting. <laughs> CB dabs. Microdosing. Heard it's actually catching on. And, and anyways. Um, so, Yohani um, had an amazing feature done on her by CBC, um, narrated by the one and only Brian Williams, a uh, famous Canadian broadcaster. And uh, what an amazing story. And she was really cool in it. Like, she, she was very honest about, you know, how she stumbled upon the game. She was honest about how she didn't really like the game at first and why she started taking photos. And... Uh, just amazing how far she's come even from when we met her from week one uh, on her journey yep. uh, here in Ottawa. So good on her. She was a really cool um, artist and uh, all the success uh, moving forward. And I, I know she's no matter what she does, she's going to be successful. She keeps on um, pursuing things, you know, as, as uh, in the same manner she pursued this project. Yep. So. Follow her on Twitter and pick up a copy of her book. I'll be picking one up before Christmas. Apparently there's a riveting feature on True Beer there. So I don't know. Riveting. Spoiler. 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 Um, Something with beer and shoes. Um, he doesn't change his insoles, apparently. I don't Ooh. know. That's a rumor. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> What's an insole? Um, so, yeah, that was really cool. And I just, uh, I love seeing uh, DIY creative endeavors supported through mainstream media. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I just got a frog in my throat. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you heard too much about it, Mike, but there was a TD Place viewing party. Looked uh, like fun. 7,000 people. Pretty awesome, right? Yeah, we had some uh, Southside crew over there. I got some pics coming back to me from that. It was nice. Good to see cool. that crew out there. Cool. Uh, always. Listen, just just be friends or follow uh, Matt Skinner on Twitter or, much, and right? or Facebook. Yeah. The guy's a beauty. Uh, so you get everything. I know what's going on. If I don't know what's going I also on with Oseg, I follow him. I also know the cheapest place to buy Christmas trees in town because I was reading his Twitter feed today. So this guy <laughs> covers like, like the whole spectrum. Are you kidding yeah. me? Let's get him a blog already. <laughs> um, but great on uh, TD Play. 7,000 people, free hot dogs, uh, fire up the Marley coffee. And uh, just uh, I guess it was a good it was a good uh, evening. And I when I left your place, um, when I did finally leave after the game, uh, I saw a lot of people walking down Bank Street from there with wearing their red and faces painted. So it was a festive atmosphere, I imagine. Cool. Well, I, there was an article in uh, Three Down Nation this week uh, done by Defend the Hour that, you know, talking about whether you're how to define yourself as not a bandwagon jumper. Yeah. And I think the joys of being one of those original fans is you don't have to you don't have to prove yourself to anybody. You know, real fans know that they're real fans. And I thought the article was fun. You know, it was kind of a neat yeah. little thing just to showcase um, you know, the difference between a diehard and a, and a newbie. But uh, that's the joys of being a diehard is you don't owe it to anyone because you prove it every day. Yeah, just saying, two years ago today, uh, I was at Shopper City East with uh, some of my greatest friends. Uh, doing what? Buying season t 
tickets. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? I don't have to prove it. Were we there a week early, though? No, no, no our body was there a week uh, early. My, my former <laughs> uh, seatmate uh, sat next to me uh, actually got there a week earlier when we walked in with him. They're like, hey, Kevin, like, how do they know you here, man? And he's like, well, I, I, got, I was so excited to get my tickets. I jumped the queue and came a week early. Uh, and I said, you got to come back next week. And, which was nice. And, so let's uh, say, sorry, Kev, you got to come back next week. And he was like, you know what, guys, football's never going to work. Speaking of our very one. first ticket. <laughs> Uh, speaking of our very first ticket rep that that evening, uh, that cold uh, November evening two years ago, uh, I don't remember what his name was. It was probably Steve, Greg, Phil, John, whatever it was. He, uh, he didn't stick with us as our ticket rep. So our uh, fan specialist or guest specialist was Kobina. And uh, thank you. We know you're listening to the very last episode, down to the last episode. We want to thank you again, even though we thanked you by email like nine times. And uh, we were going to have a, a funeral for you. But we thought that was a bit bizarre since you're like going off to do new <laughs> awesome stuff. <laughs> but uh, maybe if Mark, maybe can you, maybe some Sarah McLaughlin or something or like some Enya, just some kind of nice kind a little of sail away by Enya or a little I will remember you by McLaughlin. I am think I'm digging the Or do Enya. you want a hybrid? Oh, <laughs> listen, Actually, that there, might break the internet. There isn't enough tish- there isn't enough tissues in Ottawa for for that cry fest. Um, we'll miss you, Kabina. All the best. Sail away. Sounds amazing. And yeah, Kobe, you've been great. And uh, can't wait to sleep on your floor. And next time we're cruising through Pennsylvania on a bleed red, red black road trip. So, yeah. Hey-o. Hey-o. <laughs> Better make sure you upgrade that futon cover now because Mark and I and Mike in one bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tesla's physical properties, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. The slats won't hold up. Sleep head to foot, just to be careful, right? <laughs> Make sure your 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 water system in your new apartment is going to be in tip top shape. I thought we'd just do straight <laughs> cone head styles. We'll just stand up next to each other, sing a duct tape as the wall. Classic. No wandering hands that way, you know. Classic reference. But overall, Oseg, great job this year, eh? They've been they've been amazing. Um, yeah, this year. I mean, okay, so we're gonna have a finale next week. Last year we had multiple season finales. So this year we're only going to have one, and uh, um, but with that being said, we still need to um, thank Oseg and uh, not just Oseg, but the team of the city, um, our nation, the fans, you guys. Just what a year to remember, right? And uh, I-, I think this year is defined by uh, second and twenty-five, second and Bronson. Uh, this year is defined by all the awards we took home at the Grey Cup. Um, this year is defined by you know most outstanding player, you know Sir Vincent. Yep. Um, just all the trophies and stuff. I think it was such a success. I'm just, I just want to play winning nonstop. Too bad our man Sheen tarnished the old song. Damn him and his promiscuous activities. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So with that being said, season finale is next week. So um, we're gonna have, we're hoping to have a few guests on. Um, maybe even one in studio. If, if there's anyone you guys would like to hear from, or if you'd like to, you know, give us a shout in, uh, get in touch with us, we're, we'll do our best to have you. Um, with that being said, I also wanted to give a shout out to our number one fan, Cole Shelton. Uh, he sent us a really nice message today on Twitter, thanking us for all the shows, thanking us for the hard work, and uh, Cole, you're awesome, and you've been a great supporter all year, so so thanks so much for that. Yeah, those little messages we get from our listener base help a lot. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, on that point, I got another message today saying, I'm really glad, um, and obviously I'm paraphrasing, I'm really glad you guys are going in to do a show today because all of our nation uh, needs a smile. So that was that's yeah. a really nice one too, right? That's a good that, one. Yeah, so that one made me feel warm and fuzzy, and uh, it wasn't the fact that I was drinking a double-double at the time. <laughs> 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 uh, so the last rant of the year. I think it'll probably be the last rant. Oh, maybe we'll hear from Santino next week. I shouldn't say that. Uh, he's gonna is he do... still under contract? Or... I don't know how that works. It's uh, <laughs> listen, it's touch, it's touch and go right now. I'm having a hard time in the language barrier on his contract, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's, it's all in uh, it's all in Portuguese. Um, Santino Scott Grant. He's going to talk a little bit about the photographer that we you know. Yeah, you know, and uh, just his thoughts. I mean, we give him this avenue, and this is what he does with it. We may or may not agree with his words. I, I'm, I'm going to stay out of it, but uh, that's uh, what he's here for. All I know is that uh, Scott's been grinding, uh, taking photos of this team for a long time. His father um, kind of introduced him to it, and Scott was down in the field from the time he was 13 years old. And uh, either way, um, regardless of your feelings, like you said, towards Arant, uh, no one can question Scott's dedication to his art and to this team and Ottawa football. True that. All right, so let's listen to that, and we'll come back and we'll talk about the game. The, the Grey Cap. The Grey Cap. Let's do it. See you on the other side. 
Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Check us out on Twitter at Bleed Red Blacks and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Live from Brazil, here's the Red Black Renegade rant with Santino Filoso. Are you ready? You really mean to tell me that a five foot nothing wide receiver is worth 40,000 more than Chad Owens? We'll do it live! If the helmets weren't ready this week, they should have pushed their introduction back. That's begun. Since bringing the CFL back to the nation's capital, Ose can seemingly do no wrong. In fact, everything they've touched has turned to gold. Bold marketing decisions have paid off, TD Place is almost always sold out, and Red Black's merch is flying off the shelves. Not only has Ose proven to be extremely business savvy, to date, They've also pretty much nailed every single off-field decision they've had to make. Yet despite Oseg's magic, nobody is perfect. And our nation was reminded of that this week when news leaked out that team photographer Scott Grant and Red Blocks mascot Big Joe were left behind in Ottawa instead of being brought out to Winnipeg with the team for Grey Cup Week. Disclaimer alert, neither one of them asked me to do this rant. Now, let's start with Scott Grant. Since the 1950s, a Grant photographer has patrolled Lansdowne, capturing iconic moments in Ottawa's CFL history. First, it was his father. But at the age of 13, Scott Grant shot his first CFL game in 1969. Since then, Scott has gone on to shoot pretty much every single Rough Rider, Renegade, and Red Black home game, including preseason, regular season, and playoffs and amassed an online archive of over 15,000 CFL images. When he's not covering an actual game, Grant can be seen at every other Red Blacks practice, shooting the team and graciously posting and sharing those pictures on social media for fans and players alike to enjoy. That's why Oseg's decision to tell Scott Grant that his services weren't required during Grey Cup week is so baffling. Sure, the Grey Cup was crawling with photographers, but wouldn't you want your guy there? Scott Grant is Ottawa football, especially considering considering the fact that several players and head coach Rick Campbell were up for awards, which they went on to win. Why not bring the guy who's been capturing Ottawa's most iconic football moment since 1969? As for not bringing Big Joe, the official line is that he was needed at TD Arena for the viewing party Oseg threw. By leaving Big Joe behind, the Red Blacks were the only team at the Grey Cup without a mascot. Every single other team, including the non-playoff ones, had their mascot present. Did not having him in Winnipeg affect the outcome of the game? Of course not, but the excuse that he was needed in Ottawa for a viewing party doesn't fly. Would someone who went to that viewing party have decided to stay home because Big Joe wasn't there? No way. Plus, with all the integration between the Fury, 67s, and Red Blacks, Osei could have easily gotten one of their other mascots to host the viewing party. While they don't directly affect the game, mascots represent their team off the field. And given all the events going on last week, it would have been it should have been a no-brainer to have Big Joe in Winnipeg. Anyways, the point is, does Osei think Grey Cup trips happen every year? Unless the Red Blacks suddenly morph into the Eskimo teams of the late 70s and early 80s, this isn't going to be an annual event. That's why they should have made the most of the week and brought Big Joe, as tradition dictates, and Scott Grant, as common sense dictates. That's all for this week, guys, and thanks so much for all of your Movember donations. Make sure to rant back at Red Black Gade, and remember to bleed Red Blacks. Game recap on the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Great cup recap. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm, f- I'm still feeling positive today. Good. A day, one day removed from uh, uh, a day we were all looking forward to, a day none of us expected to see, but uh, um, walking into the office this morning, everyone prompted me, I think with some, or they approached me with some apprehension, uh, thinking that I was going to be pretty upset, um, doom and gloom, not only because the amount of money I left on the table yesterday, <laughs> but also just because our team didn't come home with, with the trophy, and uh, I, I basically, I had to put a positive spin on it every conversation I had, just... Uh, we're so lucky to showcase our team uh, nationally, internationally. Um, no one is going to take us lightly ever again. Um, and I kind of like the fact that people are saying we got a little bit of swagger and that our nation's kind of polarizing. You know, it's like us. Like, it, it, you like us or you don't. So it's a I young, like that. It's a young fan base. I, I, th- I had this discussion with you off the air before. I think this is a team. Um, it's a new team. It's in a city where... I'm not seeing as many uh, young people as I think we should have in the stands, uh, and that'll come. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but it definitely is – it's a younger fan base than when I would be going to games in Montreal. So there's definitely a polarization, and with young people comes an attitude. So And compared to young um, kids. the other team groups, uh, we're, we're quite young as well. And, uh, I mean, you just look at all the photos that came back from Winnipeg uh, this weekend, and, I mean, our major supporters are, are young people. They're people, you know, in their 20s and 30s. Um, obviously, there's some guys that are a little older that have been around, but our core – um, group of fans are, are young young men and women and I don't know how we've done it and we've all oh, we've been saying we need to engage millennials and I think that's exactly what happened and I yeah. hope we had some uh, help with that yeah obviously the team I think it, the, well, our demographics kind of show that we know that yeah uh, so, wink wink Gabriel's pizza um, yeah. but, <laughs> uh, and uh, iPhone uh, Apple I want wink the, wink sponsorship I want the first I want the first slice of Ellingson pizza when it comes out and yeah. and wink wink nasal later um, but we uh, in all honesty <laughs> let's be honest uh, you're right the the young ad, the young attitude is uh, out there and it's it shows up in social media it shows up obviously in all those avenues whether it's twitter uh, facebook or um, instagram and it's there and and there is a younger generation uh, trying to latch onto this game which brings me to the logo if we can speak about this for even if it's only a, a few few minutes here is the logo came out um it's it's part of a market the 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 30 second ad that came with that or 45 second ad that came with that I showed you yesterday. I thought it was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, made of podcasts. It's made of podcasts. The CFL <laughs> is what's what we're made of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> WWMO. And I thought. Sorry, it was, I had to take this Ninja Turtles mask off. I'm <laughs> sweating like crazy. Ha- <laughs> hashtag it's stuck to your forehead. <laughs> hashtag WW. M-O, which I thought was what would Moton order, but mm-hmm. uh, Hopkins order, but I was wrong. <laughs> Moton corrected me on Twitter. Yeah. Um, but I, it's part of a it's part of a mar- marketing program that needs to be put in place for this league. This league is suffering a couple of problems. Two, well, number one, the aging population of the of the fan base. We've talked about it on and off the air several mm-hmm. times. Uh, the logo is just part of that. The logo is part of a rebranding. You you start with the logo. And there's more progress to come with that. And I'm hoping it's an app next year that allows for more interaction. Um, the, the app online should include stats mm-hmm. and the program to do the CFL pick It should be integrated. All that should be there. I should be able to go to one app and do all that without ever leaving my phone. And I think the CFL needs to get there to keep and maintain a younger fan base. One would hope they wouldn't roll this out unless everything was was ready. So I'm hoping you're you're correct and I'm sure they they've they've thought of that. I mean, there was no point in rolling that out until until it's time, right? We, it's like Santino talking about the plaid helmets, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it until you're ready, you know? Don't talk about it. Yeah, that's right. So I, I'm a big fan of... Like all the ideas we have for our own marketing next year. Yeah. I'm not going to come on this show and tell you about it today. No, we talk about that at McDonald's before that's we right, get here. That's right. It's done. That's a business meeting. <laughs> so getting back to that logo, though, it's it's simplified. And, and there's mm-hmm. there's there's, sim, there's symbols in that logo that work for me. And and I know I took a lot of flack. I defended it a lot on on social media on Saturday morning because I had nothing else to do. And <laughs> honestly, I realized I was taking it too seriously. I honestly thought I was taking it a little bit too seriously. And I'm Matt Skinner. Thanks for pointing that out. He's always good at stuff like that. He said that I would would have supported whatever they put out. But I believe that simplicity in rebranding is important. This is a league that has has to just – we have to reach out to young people. And, if it, and I want to point that out that when you look down – you were at Grey Cup last year. And I want to say it. I'll say it. I'll say it here. Yes, we saw lots of inst- Instagram. I saw lots of social media out there mm-hmm. with young people in the photos and a lot of gray hairs in the background. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, but – this league cannot continue to go down that road without gaining new fan base. This city gambled on the fact that this team will be here after five years, that the collective bargaining agreement will be there, yeah. that the fan base will be there across the league. We need to reach out to Americans a lot more with television and internet access. And, so. I, and I think that uh, I, don't, I would never want to, to neglect anyone, any fan of the league, um, but it's, it's time now to definitely be a little more aggressive and uh, before it's too late, and you talked about it a few weeks ago on the show, you know, we don't know where we're going to be in 10 years, right? 
We don't know where we we're going to be in six. We don't know. Right. So let's let's get the kids involved now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, as, 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 we've said this yeah. many times. It's like So once they're done school or once they're done paying their OSAP, you know, they're those season ticket holders. And then, you know, the people who can't go to games anymore, um, you know, there's someone to fill those seats years down the road. So we had an interesting conversation over breakfast as a team podcast a couple of weeks ago. Great minds at that table. Two, two great football minds at that table. One being Janin and second being Santino. No particular order. Absolutely. Oh, shit. I thought you were going to say me but it's okay no. I was, I, you know what i was so i was knee deep in cinnamon buns so don't worry about me no. but the conversation that came out of that breakfast amongst those uh, the, those great football minds was how quiet was the commissioner this year that's a quiet as quiet cue cue the cue the crickets cue the, yeah. honestly yeah com, what's his name do we know i don't know he's a good looking young man he's though, a damn sure. good looking dude that that new branded toque looked amazing on him i'd like to get one um uh, for the coin toss, it was a nice toque he was wearing yesterday. Um, but the the commish was a little quiet this year. Two things had to be. Number one, Toronto had to be fixed. You had to fix Toronto, yeah. which meant you need to fix BMO. You had to come up with an agreement with the ownership in Toronto to find a way to put a team there that's going to be successful. Because that is the core, believe it or not, Toronto. Things, things that happen in Toronto will filter out and work in the rest of the country. Expansion would be a great idea. We had a great talk about Halifax at that breakfast table, which I would love to see happen. Mm -hmm. Let's even out these two divisions and get it right so we're not that oddball crossover league. Fixing Toronto was number one. Fixing the rest of the league will be number two. They got the collective bargaining agreement, and it felt like this year they were just holding back and gathering the war chest. And part of that war chest will be what we see with this logo and what will come out of that next year. The marketing behind that needs to be, well, we'll see. I mean, we'll see it next year, but it has to be something that basically starts to put this league on the map again. It was it was a smart decision though, because Kohan was was uh, he went out on top, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the next side coming in, I think it was smart for him. You know, we'll say tactical pause to kind of just stay in the shadows for a little while, and and while he's still working hard, showcase the team, showcase the league. Uh, whereas Mr. Kohan, you know, loves showcasing his own grill, right? And you, Let's you, be honest. And you and I, you know someone in that realm in that office right that def there was changes made yeah so uh, people was, left with him uh, yeah yeah and that's we'll leave it at that yeah, yeah. what we what we know mm -hmm. is that there was changes within that we won't talk about but mm -hmm. there was changes within that office that were for the better and some maybe for the worse and and they have to adjust to that when you have a guy and you said it like koan that was at the the helm for so long making things happen a certain way you know, people get stuck in that kind of mindset, and it's time for change. So and I imagine he was putting his team together over the last year and making sure he's getting it right. But uh, either way, um, it's encouraging, and uh, I do like. We, there's no need to rush into anything, you no. know. Um, like, I think like actually talking about the game. We don't need to rush into that. We're having a great talk. This about is it. an amazing Grey Cup recap. <laughs> yeah, I just realized. No, but you're but welcome, you're welcome to season ticket holder Mike's State of the League address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, what's the commissioner's name? I don't know. The good-looking guy? <laughs> no, it's a good thing we don't know his name, right? I, why, why do we know Gary B Bettman? Because he changed the game. I, I'm going to defer whether I know his name or not. I, I, just to help your argument, I'll say I don't know who he is. Good. Um, let's get into the football game. And we'll talk about Gary Bettman on the basement tapes. That little weasel. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone I can pat on top of the head, don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, so are we officially a team that travels well now? Like not only our fan base, but it looks like our teams learned to play on the road recently. It was a big concern to us earlier in the year. Um, I was worried. Um, another thing we were all worried about. Well, okay, we weren't worried, but some people were. Um, big Joe made his appearance. So apparently Jeanine was able to stick him in uh, her carry-on. And apparently um, Ottawa J is... And thanks for taking one for the team with those uh, additional baggage weight fees that you had to probably... Is she Pokeroo? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I I've know. never seen Big Joe and Janine in the same place at the same time. <sighs> wow. that's That but, just blew my mind, man. I'm just saying. All right. I guess that's it for this show. Just chew on that for a week, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Making things up as I go. Um, okay. You know what? We're, let's, just, let's just get into this. Enough dilly dallying. We lost the game. We all know that. We lost twenty to twenty six. But uh, this wasn't a normal game. This was 
this was a pretty intense, close game. And for a couple of guys, myself and I, uh, myself and I, <laughs> well, me, myself and I, great me, movie, myself, Jim Carrey. me, myself and Irene. Yeah. Uh, but Mike and I um, had some wagers going. I actually put a bet down before the season started that the Red Blacks would win the Grey Cup, which paid nicely. Uh, Mike and I had another wager going and um, what a sweat it was. And um, there's one we're going to focus on the they, part of the game. They that- covered, by the way. They did cover, yeah. So, Thanks, hey, thank, J- Johnny Sanchez. Thank you, Johnny Sanchez. Two for two, bud. <laughs> He's going to pay for my season tickets next year. <laughs> Forget this rate, I'll be paying for his, too. This guy's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we want to focus on you know, those first five minutes of the game. And for me, um, that was that was just really... What a great treat to see your team come out of the, the gate like that and... Uh, and yeah, you got five minutes, Mike? Five minutes and 13 points is what I actually have, which is incredible. When you look at that first half, I really felt like it was going to start off as, as a bit of a shootout. You know, mm-hmm. we were looking, you know, I, I was ready to tweet, Deb, are we in for a barn burner here or, or not? But, you know, that D block showed up on, and literally on both sides of the ball. Yeah, uh, that the defensive coaching ability of both these sides, both sides of the ball, definitely showed up. I know. I don't know if it's if it's a like you said a coaching thing or a playoff thing or just the familiarity with these teams with each other. But normally in the second half is when offenses can go in and make uh, adjustments, right? Yeah. And we see teams come out in the second half all the time and, and light people up. But it's like the inverse happened, and all the defensive minds really tighten the screws up and. And there wasn't much offense to mention at all in the second half. No, of the and game. speaking of mind games, don't forget, you know, um, our team stayed uh, in the dressing room a little bit longer than they should, and there was almost a penalty for it. Remember that one? Yeah, I wonder Classic. what was going on in there. A little bit of mind games, I think. Do you know what it was? It was the fallout boy. It just ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> now I heard someone delivered a smash of pierogies. <laughs> yeah. They probably had Nickelback playing in the dressing room oh, just pff. to really screw everybody. Oh up. man, that's oh. a meta game. You're not going to win. <laughs> I want to look at those two first series of plays from the Ottawa offensive uh, side of the ball, though. Let's take a look at that first the first series. Seven plays, 66 yards gained in the air, capped off by a three-yard pass to who, Fossey, Corsi? Mr. Lavoie, and I called it. He calls it. Another thing I'd like to mention is that on the 44-man roster, Mr. Lavoie is a running back, so I love that, too. Yes. Love seeing him there. Yep. That's where he belongs. Big man. Uh, yeah. That string of passing attack basically looked like our on our end, that would be the beginning of what we thought would be that barn burner. I mean, you mm-hmm. and I were like, wow, he just moved the ball down the field seven plays like it was nobody's business. Touchdown, basically, right then and there. Seven plays, 73 yards, two minutes and 48 seconds. So there's your almost your half of five minutes that just happened there, right? Then you come over here and you go turnover on the ensuing kickoff. Antoine Pernault. And yeah. we're going to talk about this guy a little bit more coming up. Wasn't he a beauty? He, he seems to get better every game. And uh, he's such a nice kid. And uh, it's hard to believe he's still so young, you know? Like, I hope, I really hope we see him uh, in a Red Blacks uniform. You know, until our names are on the seats. Yeah, so four tackles for Antoine Pernot for the day, including the the tackle with the force fumble and the recovery on that returning kickoff. Mm-hmm. So let's cue Hank again. So we're still in those two, first two plays of the game. E. Jackson tops off a touchdown scoring drive, four plays, 40 yards, and two minutes and 19 seconds. Wow. Just like that. 13-0. And then Milo and, misses and, the extra point. I was I was planning yeah. the parade. <laughs> I know. Uh, that breaks it down. That that's a great start to me. That's what I'll remember from that great cup. I'll remember that great start, and then a defensive uh, standstill uh, that only included uh, thirteen points uh, in the second half. So basically, Ottawa uh, out to that early thirteen ten uh, um, lead in the first quarter. Yeah, and couldn't get another touchdown the rest of the game. And then yeah, played. We just played catch. Just just trying to hang on. We played hang on. So in football. So uh, one thing that we both picked up on, and I'm sure everyone else did as well, was uh, either one or two things were happening. Edmonton was defending our our A game, right? And they were basically saying you're not going to beat us by throwing to the big four, right? And you're going to have to beat us by running the ball or by you know, I hate the dink and dunk term, but that's basically what our offense consisted of yesterday. The middle of the field was jammed. Yeah. So, um, I mean, one thing that we obviously noticed was, was you know, where was Brad Sinopoli, you know? Um, <laughs> where in the world is Brad Sinopoli? Cue from where in the world is Carmen San Diego. I'm going to ask you one more time. Where the f*** is Carmen San Diego? Do 
up? Do do they do up? Do tell me where the is Carmen San Diego. I gotta read these notes before the show starts. You know what's funny? Welcome. I was trying to download Where in the World is Carmen San Diego on my phone the other day. Yeah. And apparently there's no free version. So what up with that, right? What? Yeah, that's a, I loved watching do that. It, do it, Rockapella. Do it, Rockapella. Yeah. Do up. Do 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 up. Do tell me where the f is. Carmen San Diego. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> um, Holy moly. Anyway, so um, yeah, Sinopoli one completion for eight yards, and Mike, you had to grind through uh, the stats that we got from our our CFL stats man. But apparently that was his only target as well. And true DraftKings daily fantasy strategy <laughs> um, statistics, uh, targets are very important in when you're talking about a receiver. Yeah. How many times is a receiver targeted in a game? How many times does he catch it? Uh, and then within those targets, you look at how many were dropped balls. Uh, Mr. Sinopoli was targeted once for that eight-yard gain, and that was it. Um, not once did we see him... Uh, out uh, doing a hook or trying to do a slant for another pass. You brought it up. Talk talk to the tell, tell the listeners where was Brad Sinopoli for the most part. It seemed like any time the pocket was collapsing around Hank, Brad was in there blocking. So I'm not really sure what kind of setups they had, but it seemed like number 88 was always in there when the pocket was collapsing. And that's not where I see... Obviously, Edmonton was, was really messing with them. And they had them off their game. And I feel like Ottawa, uh, their answer... Uh, they didn't have an answer. They didn't. Yeah. And I get back to that Odell Willis. Uh, there was several times I, I spoke to you during the game. I said, let's watch Odell. He would blitz. He would drop back in coverage, which meant if there was an opportunity, he was in in coverage looking after Ellingson and yep. or Sinopoli, depending on what side of the ball that they were going to blitz on. So you never knew whether Willis was coming. And that man... Well, there, I, I, I listen. I blew smoke up his rear end. Well, last he was a year. free agent last year, and we were wanting. I was, him. we were wanting. I was, him. I was yeah. wishing, and, and and but boy, does that guy have a great football mind? Because you could just yeah. isolate. Give me an ISO cam of that guy, and you, you're watching one of the greatest defensive players in CFL he, history. He basically stops uh, the read option from being effective. It doesn't right? show up in the stats. He has two tackles and a sack, but he was he was integral. Yeah, and making sure that 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 Henry didn't know what to do with that middle of the middle of the field pass, and a few passes that we saw Ellingson take up the middle, he was there was like three guys around him. So basically, Henry was threading it in there on a needle, which good yeah. for Henry. But yeah. we also know that Henry is, is, you know, he can't do that every every play. Um, what else, for some of those stats that, that came along with that? I'm sorry, I have this lost. Deep. We're gonna look at. No, that's okay. So one thing that I want to bring up was was the result of these of this uh, defense yep. that was obviously stifling us was um, Powell became our our really our only resource that was getting us any positive yeah, yardage. We were calling him check check down Powell yesterday. Basically, yeah, like he was he uh, he was a receiver almost, you know. And um, Edmonton wasn't giving up anything down the middle of the field. Seven receptions. For 57 yards and only eight total targets down the middle. And um, that was Powell. Yeah, and that was him. So, I mean, he, he also had 10 rushing attempts for 66 yards. He didn't get those 15 touches and we lost. So, just tell me where to sign my contract, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jackson, big player, big game, big plays. I mean, I really like that guy. There's something about his demeanor. So he's, just... but he stepped up yeah. and he seemed to get open when it counted. Yeah. And, and, but, but there's, there's that Henry chemistry and he finds somebody each game that, that has an ability to be open and be capable of catching the ball. And this, mm -hmm. this week it was, uh, Ernest Jackson. And, uh, you know, it didn't seem like he had a fair shake all season, I don't know his, his – well, we're going to look at season-ending stats next week, but uh, – end of season stats next week. But uh, I think Jackson, it was, a, it was a breakout game for him despite the loss. I think it was good for him to come out and have a big game with Henry and prove that, you know, he can still he can still get up there and make some catches. So I, I love tough uh, defensive football. You know me. I love low-scoring games. I love – I don't mind the – Punt to punt to punt to punt. I love that. I love we're, seeing. We're AFC North fans. I mean, we've yeah. we've seen sixteen to nine <laughs> Browns games. Like, uh, if if like, the come on. if the Bengals win the Super Bowl six three, I'll be the happiest man on earth. Because <laughs> it also means that no one can say that Andy Dalton did anything good again, right? So <laughs> even if he wins, he won't be able to win. So 
Anyways, ginger problems. Um, so what we really saw, and I mentioned this earlier, was at halftime, the defensive adjustments, even before halftime, um, were quite evident. And um, we know that Riley is a defensive uh, – or not Riley, uh, the coach – um, his name jo- Jones. Jones is a defensive minded guy. Yep. And, um, and we saw that, I mean, we got some smart defensive minds on our side too, but what a, what a battle it turned out to be. So let's Henry, let's just take a look at Henry's final stats, uh, 22 for 29, 220 yards, two TD passes and one interception. Here's two key stats in this. I'll bring up, let's bring up Henry's stats here momentarily, 21 first downs, and then we're going to flip it to the other side. So let's take a look at what, what our D block did and what they did to manage Mr. Riley. What were his final stats there? So they held Riley um, to 269 yards while well held, 21 for 35, uh, two TDs, but this is the stat that says it all, and uh, he, 28 first downs. That's the difference. Boom. That's it. Cause, yeah. Uh, okay, hold on. You, yeah, keep rolling some some of that great those great notes. I got something else for you. So Capasati and Pruno, uh, they once again prove themselves, and uh, they you know they show up for these big games and. Uh, you know, I, I really like these these two young kids, uh, young Canadian guys, and they're going to be here for a long time. Uh, speaking of another kid who isn't Canadian, but I think is going to be here for a long time, is uh, Abdul Kane, and he, uh, I mean, he just keeps on coming up big, and and we see him throwing his body around everywhere, and uh, I don't know, I just think he. He's come so far, and I can't wait to see what what he can what he's going to become. You know, he he had that one bad pass interference, um, but he was targeted, and we'll get into uh, some of those targets that well, he was he facing. Well, because he was covering all game, right? Yeah. Like either Walker or Bowman. So um, the fact that we kept those guys from from really tearing it up uh, shows our progress from this year. If you remember, a few months ago, um, they pretty much uh, you know did what they wanted with us. Yes, so. right. So getting back to those, uh, getting back to just just those stats. Talking about those first downs. If you take a look at the first half alone, the time of possession for Edmonton: fifteen minutes, ten seconds. Ottawa: fourteen, fifty. So it split down the middle. Those stats, that time of possession was so evenly split when you look at it. Time of possession for Edmonton: thirty-two minutes, twenty-nine seconds, or twenty-seven thirty-one for Ottawa. There's your difference in just the first downs. Those those extra six first downs or seven I missed it six, seven first downs, seven extra plays uh, allowed them to have the ball at the end of the game mm-hmm. and uh, be in the driver's seat as uh, would, you know as the announcers like to say so um, that says it all those 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 minutes uh, it was a it, it was a close game you look at it defensively there was only three sacks for Edmonton and two for Ottawa so it wasn't like you know either one of those defensive lines were getting through mm-hmm. but they were but Edmonton was doing I don't know they were they were affecting us in different ways defensively though I think yep. uh, I think that's probably one of the better groups uh, that we've seen um, against our O-line in a long time and uh, the first group um, to really put any heat on uh, Sir Vincent you know I don't think hey, we saw a sack come from from his side and I don't think we've seen a guy go around him all year so um yeah once again mad props to edmonton's uh defensive coordinator and uh and their defensive team i think i think they really played amazing yeah and that's the thing that i think edmonton mixed those sacks around the team it wasn't just one guy getting in there they were mm-hmm. coming from all different sizes as, as i mentioned i think earlier. uncle tim got half a sack too actually i think he did i yeah. think uncle tim good t- on him <laughs> and he and he didn't spill his beer the whole time no no what a, so, what what a pro right that's why so andrew's got him on the show right he's not some chump you get, and that's what you see. You see Riley, he was really, at moments, he was trying to force the ball into Stafford and, and or Bowman. But you looked at our secondary made some big step-up plays and knocked down a few of those balls. You look at the targeting and the drop balls. And in that area was was Thompson, was Kane making those plays. And, and they'll be back next year to do the same with just as much talent and now experience on their side. Uh, to to do it again and being in the big game and being in the big uh, under the big tent as they say and I, I love hey man that goes a long way and uh, like I said someone earlier today had said uh, you know swagger to define our nation and I think our D block and that I mean <laughs> they initiate that's, that the swagger, is man. that's that's the core of it yeah man, so you, you wrap up a plate for those boys when they come over that's the swagger they got you better have a plate on the on the oven man <laughs> yeah. you better be ra- <laughs> yeah you better be ready to go and they're, you know? e- and they're not even gonna stay they're not right? gonna stay man they're not even getting out of the car I'm here for dinner you're bringing that out to the road that's so they right, can get man. out of here that's eat right. what they want <laughs> that's right you know what I'm talking about yeah. so anyways uh, I love it I think yeah. it's great and uh, if it engages 
a younger demographic or if it makes it cool to be a, a Red Blacks fan, um, that's amazing. That's what, that's what we need to do. We got the logo. We got the team. We got the organization. Um, we got the plaid on our side. So Speaking of some of those dudes, uh, in the trenches, Lemon, Hopkins, and that gang, they stuffed the run for the most part and did their best to disrupt Riley. The problem with Riley, though, is when you flush him and he gets running forward with the ball, his eyes are wide open. He's one of the mm-hmm. best on the run football yeah. throwers the CFL has, and his experience. He know he's not worried. Yeah, he he had his legs were moving, and he made some plays when he's flushed out of the pocket. And right away, I'd say, oh, there he is. He's moving up forward out of the pocket, and it's his seventeen yard and that, pass. And that's been probably our weakest point uh, all all year was uh, mobile quarterbacks uh, over or under pursuing. Yep. And uh, that's pretty much uh, really our only weak spot of, of our defense that I, I would say moving forward is that um, apprehension towards mobile quarterbacks and defending the middle of the field. Yeah. And and what we did on the other side of the ball was uh, was exploit the middle of the field. So it was, yeah. it was an interesting season, definitely both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. Special teams breakdown, simply said. <sighs> Jamal Smith, son. There you go. Thank, Mr. thank you, Jamal. Mr. Reliable, um, you may not have uh, – you know, uh, done anything too exciting, but you protected the ball, and uh, he made some smart plays. So good to good to have him back, and uh, good to see good to see him get a little bonus. Good to see all these boys get a bonus making Grey Cup, right? Yes. Hopefully, it's amazing. They yeah. work hard. Uh, some of these guys, um, maybe this is their first time or their last time to get to do it, and I hope they all really enjoyed it and sucked it up and and just uh, embraced the whole experience along with the, the, the nice paycheck they got when they got home. I love it. This one's for you, Jamal. Number 84, number one in my heart, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you took the ball back on a punt return four times for 32 yards total, a 19 long. That one was also very exciting. I got We got a little excited there when you went for 19 yards. Kickoff returns, Mr. Smith. I like that, Mr. Smith. Hell of a name, sir. Catchy. <laughs> he did that four times. We're not related, by the way. <laughs> four times. That's what you think. That's what I think. Ancestry.com. I'll might say- cost you a couple G's, but they'll dig down deep enough to make sure you're related. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're related. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Through the Church of England. Um, number four. Uh, sorry, four returns for 56 yards with a long of 21. You did your job back there. You held onto the ball, and uh, you made a few things happen. So thanks for coming back, and we'll see you next year. I know it. I know it. Nice. And uh, another thing about the special teams, um, just an amazing improvement um, going from pre-bye week to going getting prepped for the Ticats game, uh, heading into Grey Cup. Uh, I know we've given Yano a really hard time this year, uh, deservedly so, um, but he's obviously a professional and he's been working hard and maybe what we're seeing now um, is the results of all that hard work. And uh, I, don't, I know we had talked earlier you know, does does Yano have a place on this team or not next year? We'll find and, out. And um, I don't know. That's uh, that, we'll let the the pros um, decide that. All I know is that we're seeing an improvement, and uh, it wasn't a liability to us in the playoffs. Like we we're all we we're all really worried about. Um, okay, so next week we're gonna have. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Is there anything else you want to touch on before we? Uh, blast out of here no just we gotta we gotta buy town beats i gotta get to don't forget that yeah uh so next week we're gonna have uh janine in here we're gonna do talk a little bit more about gray cup experience um what it's like to you know just her whole experience she was really busy uh in and out of tv studios uh hosting shows <laughs> la tisa hopefully actually i called her agent he said he thinks she'll be able to make it next week yep. but she may have prior commitments so we'll see um <laughs> we're working we're actually working on a show with ctv it's kind of modeled after the view um, <laughs> but it's it's more for radio because it's janine would be fine for television but it's you it's us three so it's really. called the ears, the actually. ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just listen to us um but yeah we've been told we have to wear the uh the digital masks permanently for that one nice yeah. well the way i'm sweating wedding i don't know if this one's gonna come off <laughs> <laughs> um so we have a by town beat segment this week as we do um johnny z i'll try my cadence at this set it up uh so mark nailed it last week but uh mike um could, would you mind telling us about the uh, the band we have this week once again john mr johnny z has put together the by town beats for this this week the band is The Creeps. The Creeps are a punk rock band, and I know all about them. They're very fun to listen to. Anyone who's been around here has yeah. seen that bass player rock that stand-up bass at some point or another. I, oh, they are fun, aren't they? Good live show. They're mm-hmm. up there. With, uh, no, I'll just I'll just stick to The Creeps. <laughs> stick to The Creeps. Good live show. They're stick up to there, the notes, bud. They're stick up there the with Shaniqua, <laughs> Fairfax. <laughs> 
Okay. Gentlemen, take your hands out of your pockets and put them together. For the members of this band are Scotty, <laughs> our vocals and guitar, Ian on bass and vocals, Jordy does the drum and vocals. They are the creeps found at bandcamp.com. Always with their song called Move from their May 2013 release, Our Time. So take a listen to that. That's always good little creeps. See um, you Sunday for the two ninety nine buffet. I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, up next, Traffic with Colin. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Uh, yo, so the 97's like 10 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, listen, one more after this, and uh, we'll call it a season. Thanks for listening. And I, I still want to say uh, winning, okay? Chaching. We're all winning. We're here, and uh, we have an excuse to keep doing shows. This time last year, I think we were already in receivership, so let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Cheers. Here at Bleed Red Blacks, we love our football, but we also love the music our great city has to offer. It's the Bytown Beats, local music spotlight segment on the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. Today's featured artist, The Creeps. Thank you for listening to this week's installment of the Bleed Red Blacks podcast. All musical content used in this podcast is all local Ottawa talent. If you are a local artist wanting to get your material heard on Bleed Red Blacks, send us a message on our Facebook group. Tune in next time, and remember to Bleed Red Black. Bleed Red Black.